my name is Jim, and today I'm going to show you the installation I did on my North River Seahawk, my 21-foot North River Seahawk, that is called the Garmin Reactor 40 Kicker Autopilot. Um, I've, it's new enough, and we just bought it. I couldn't find any YouTubes on it, so I thought I'd show you guys what I came across, so that way, I'm, hopefully, it will help you when you go to install one if you decide to pull the trigger on one of these things. So let me tell you a little bit about the you know, Reactor 40. What that is, is that takes the place, from what I understand, of the Garmin TR1 Kicker Autopilot. And, uh, and it works really good, it has the same features, but the components are completely different. So let me show you from what I came across that the, the instructions that come with it are very thorough, but they don't have any pictures. And so with that in mind, let's start at the kicker with the uh, steering activator and the throttle activator. And we'll start with that and we'll show you from there and then we'll go into the boat. So this is the throttle activator. This is where we're gonna start. This is what they recommend on the instructions. And so this is the new throttle activator with the cable coming down, the throttle cable. And as you can see coming from this side, that the bracket, this is one place that I had a problem with where to place that bracket. These little brackets here to come onto the throttle linkage, these come multiple kits in your kit for the different motors. And so this is what's for the Yamaha 9.9. And then you also change this little plastic uh, snap-on right here that, that comes for the throttle linkage. Okay, that also comes with the kit. Okay, that comes out of your bracket. You put this bracket on here. This is the manifold bolt. You don't put a new bolt in. You just move this hose back, put that bracket there. Then you move this around. I'm gonna come around. Now you come around to the throttle activator box. That was a big question where that goes on this motor. They didn't really explain that. This thin wire here is your RPM sensor wire. That tie wraps to your spark plug wire. And then I tie wrapped the whole box to the spark plug cap. Then the other cable that comes through here, that comes off and that's what's gonna go to your ECU. That comes around, comes over through the front of your motor here. This is the rubberized exit port right down by my hand wash that comes down and that's going to go up through the gunnel. Okay, that's the throttle activator. Now, right here, steering activator. That was pretty simple. Basically what you do is you look here, if you come around here, Dan, you look at this. This is your tiller tube right here and that came with a cap on both sides. Pop that cap off, take that tube, it's hollow, swab that out with lithium grease and then put your throttle activator and it slides in, it threads on here. Once you get it set to the direction where the cable wants to go, you Allen wrench that down tight. Then you have a sill, you have a sill fitting right here that goes on the thing, you put that on. Then you put your bracket on here, that's the vertical bracket, they have the different brackets for the different motors. Then you'll put that on, which will come up to your bracket. Now here's one place that didn't really explain and was that you have to know, this bracket here that was on the motor, needs to come completely off because you need this motor to be as free as you can. Then underneath here is where you hook up that pivoting bracket, okay? And I had to re kind of recreate this because on my sea trial, what they get brought came with kind of fell apart, so I recreated that, but that uh, that is for you to find out. Okay, there. Now, what we'll do is we'll move into the boats. Those are those two components. Now, in the boat, the components we're gonna have is we're gonna have your ECU, your main brain, your CCU, your compass brain, and your remote control that are all pretty much plug and play. And the one item that I do put, that I did put on this boat that came with it that comes optional whether you buy it or not, and that is the C the GHC20 helm control. Okay, so now we'll move into the boat and I'll show you those. Okay, so right here, this is my GHC20 helm control. This comes optional. Now what I did here is on mine, I don't use my speedometer anymore that looks just like this because I use my my my, gener my Lowrance and so I my ground that out a little bit and that's where I put my helm control for the uh, for the auto kicker. So now down here below, okay, that's where the CCU was. Now what they recommend for that CCU is they want that to be um, 
as close to the water line and as close to the center line as possible. So depending on what works that's durable, that's what works for you. And also it has to be away from any magnetic field, which it shows all that on the instructions. So we don't need to go too much detail on that. But that's where I placed it right here. So then the rest of it, this is plug and play. That, this, uh, the GHC is plug and play uh, with the NEMA 2000 cord. If you have a NEMA 2000 network, you don't need to add it, but if you don't have one, it comes with the cords and tees to make that. that. That hooks into your NEMA 2000. Your CCU hooks into your NEMA 2000. And then this has a cable that it comes with that goes to your ECU, okay? Well, here's the remote control that comes with this unit. Now, the one nice thing about this remote control is that it comes standard on the reactor wirelessly. And I'll show you a little bit about how it works at the very end. But what we do is they give you a bracket on just where to put it. And that's where I put that in. Now here's where the ECU went. Or here's where I put it. I put it in this gunnel area. Now they don't want this to be in an area to where it's, uh, it gets a lot of water. So what I did is I actually made a little bracket here to, to cover that. So that way it wouldn't be down with this, you know, get a lot of splash. But that's the ECU right here. Now here's where I ran into a problem. My CCU cable, which is 16 feet long, came around the gunnel, but here's where it stopped, right here. That was my issue. That's the biggest issue I had with this. Only issue I had with that. A shout out to Brady from Stanwood Marine. He uh, ordered me one, got one in. It came 15 feet long, but you get what you get. And so then I ran that around. As you can see, that all cabled in there, and that's all set to go. I'll just pop that cover back on, you're done. It's just plug and play, works great, um, easy in that sense of the matter. So there you go. That is ba the basic installation of the Garmin Reactor 40 Kicker Autopilot. Now let me show you that remote control real quick like and how, you know, how it works. What I really like about this is that it's really nice and simple. You can put this lanyard around your neck and have it hanging here. It's just like the TR1 auto control or remote control, but this is wireless. The nice thing that the, the added feature with this is if you want to go in this direction, you don't have to uh, you do your step increments, you know, and your pattern steering. You can just turn it over here, hit your button, and it will actually turn that direction. So very good. The communication to the Lawrence is great. I've got it hooked up to my Lawrence Gen 3. It communicates perfectly. I set a route, it can engage it, and it starts on that route. Um, I think it's going to be really enjoyable to use. So, thank you very much. Hope this helps you out. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>